Hello again, continuing with the series on the design and selection of knives. And we previously reviewed uh, a book about the Bowie knife, which mainly um, concentrated on the history of um, James Bowie, uh, his associates, and how the knife was developed uh, back in the day. Uh, what we're going to look at today is a book about the actual um, design and the manufacture and the use of the Bowie knife. And it's this book, Bowie's Big Knives and the Best Battle Blades by Bill Bagwell. It's actually a, a collection of articles he wrote for Soldier Fortune magazine uh, under the title Battle Blades, uh, edited together with a, a couple of introductions. And uh, Bill is uh, mainly known for being a knife maker, a custom knife maker, and he specializes in uh, Bowie's. Some of his knife designs, um, which are really expensive, as you can imagine, custom made, have been made under license by Ontario Knife Company. For example, the Hell's Bells Bowie, and I'll put a picture of it with this. And it's um, one of the most sought after. It, even the um, licensed copy is fairly expensive, but uh, it, it, it's the epitome of um, modern Bowie design. And we actually had a, a class on the Bowie knife at one of the internationals, Mark Duggan presented it and uh, he brought an Ontario with him and it was a very impressive piece of steel. Uh, the book has a lot of material. One of the things he talks about is the attributes of the Bowie, what makes it a special knife. And being a knife maker and also associating with a lot of people who use the knife, um, and there's pictures of uh, Bill training some special forces soldiers in, in uh, knife fighting in the, in the book. Um, he has identified uh, several attributes that make the Bowie what it is. The first is the length. It's a big knife. Although you can have um, the Bowie overall design in a more compact form, the traditional and uh, celebrated version is 10, 12 plus inches in blade length and what this gives you is the archimedes principle of leverage or what uh, james keating has called the fly swatter principle if there's a fly and you try to hit it with your hand in the air you've got no chance of hitting it but if you get a rolled up newspaper you can hit it because the length gives you the accelerated speed at the tip um by just by the uh, uh, leverage formula so the point of the knife and the um, false edge of the large bowie are traveling really really fast uh, and uh, speed is an added quality uh, or increased speed is an added quality so that's one thing the other main thing is the point design and the um, unique point of the Bowie is a leading edge and Bill explains it in, in the book much better than I can what this does it, it's it's a particularly sharp point and Fred Perrin the noted French knife maker did some tests for the um, French military uh, on their armor to see what it would resist and the uh, most um, reliable penetrator was the Bowie, e even more so than knives that were specifically designed to go through armor, the, the Bowie knife. And then the other thing is the triangles formed by the, the uh, two curves of the point are different. They are, are different shaped triangles, and this is a wound aggregate, aggravating feature. Uh, that as you insert it into a target, it, it, the cutting pressure on the um, main edge increase is increased by the differential 
of the slightly less efficient uh, or, or coarser angle of the uh, false end. So those three things uh, make the Bowie a particularly uh, effective knife. Who came up with that particular point and the, the, the um, asymmetrical grind? It's been lost in history, we can guess, but whoever it was, was a genius. Um, to research the, uh, the material, he goes to New Orleans, there's pictures taken in New Orleans, where there were schools of knife fighting. I mentioned in the Bowie book about the dueling and so on. And uh, there, there were places there where um, you could learn. And there was one, one um, area of oaks which were, where duels were held. And there was um, sometimes four duels a day for several years. Uh, so it, it was an amazing time. Absolutely. Um, one of his main sources of information on the, the way the bow is used was James Keating. James Keating is a very, very celebrated uh, knife instructor. Um, I, I had um, some communication with him back in the day, and I always found him um, very, very pleasant to deal with and uh, highly knowledgeable. And uh, I think his name will come up in some more when we, we talk about... Um, books on knife training another section of the book or another chapter is about uh, another massive knife from this one from world war ii the v44 uh, usually made by case sometimes known as the carlson raider and i've got a special affection for this knife because i had one many many years ago in in the 60s um, a friend of mine who was of chinese descent we, we were both madly interested in the martial arts. And his father uh, had this case knife and uh, he ended up giving it to me. He, he'd got it back in China. So because it, they were used out there um, during World War II. And uh, it had a cracked handle, but that was the only, uh, the only um, deficit on it. I didn't know what it was. I just knew it was a big knife. And... Um, we used to use it for demonstrations of knife defense because it was a big, very um, visual knife. You could see, you know, that, that it was um, uh, a knife to be reckoned with. And um, I don't know what happened to it. Um, somewhere I was moving house or whatever, and uh, it's uh, lost in the midst of time. I wish I still had it. But it, it was a really interesting knife. Bill Bagwell really rates it. Uh, other chapters in, in, in <clears throat> include the uh, mechanics of cutting, um, the, the best strokes and so on. And um, so there's a, really a, a lot of information in the book. And um, uh, I, I got a lot out of it, particularly on the Bowie. And um, it's... Uh, Anybody who's interested in that section of knife history will find this book invaluable.